All right. Hello, everybody. Jurassic Player here. And today we are going to be doing a little 3DS theming uh, tutorial sort of thing with Comet Editor. Uh, so first off, since apparently a lot of people like using Usagi and uh, generally don't know how to save their progress from Usagi and convert it, uh, we'll start off there. And, uh, we'll just, we'll just go from there. So let's take this theme that is not anywhere near complete. And we'll add a top screen. We'll add a bottom screen. We'll add in folder order. Cool, and then we'll make sure we have our flags on. Change this to some slow scroll. Uh, we want BGM music, sound effects, sure. Um, okay, we'll add this one. Cool. Uh, maybe we'll even change some of the button colors. Button colors. Cursor, arrow, maybe these ones will be easiest. So let's do that. We'll change our close button to just some, some sort of red. Glow, text glow, we don't really care. Foreground unpressed, foreground pressed. Oh my gosh, this text is awful. What is that color? Uh, it's kind of blinding actually, that hurts. <laughs> is it this one? No. What is that color? This one? This one? Okay, there we go. Okay, good enough. Uh, so that we'll change this to maybe just a bunch of blues, something easy to differentiate. Drop a whole bunch of random colors. All right, cool. So we have our nice random pink color, random blue color. Uh, definitely not default. And then uh, we can just save it, um, save as, save, either one works. Uh, I'm going to put it in a brand new folder called incomplete. There's not anything in here. And, uh, theme saves successfully. There's no BGM because we did not copy one over and we will do that right now. We'll just copy this one. This is pre-converted already because I just happen to have already done that. And uh, so we have our body LZ bin. Uh, there's an info.smdh, which is your theme information. So generally your info about like the author, short description, long description, large icons, small icons. Those are all present inside this smdh file. Um, and that's basically all we need from here. Uh, all we needed really was just to get this body dot, uh, body underscore LZ dot bin from Usagi. So we're going to go over to my desktop and we're going to open up Kame editor. There we go. Okay, so comment editor, uh, we want to go click on what would be, I believe, the home button uh, so that it goes to deploy and we want to load. But before we do that, uh, this is our file explorer. This is the same incomplete folder. We just want to grab all of this and compress it to a zip file. So archive.zip is what it's called. That. And if we load, 
that. Wow, that's really long. If we load that archive.zip, which I placed in here, archive.zip, it will import our theme and uh, yeah, we have our closed colors, our open colors. Our audio has also been taken over, so that's that's fine and dandy. Um, I believe we should have our file icon, maybe? Okay, file icon does not seem like it worked very well. Yeah, it doesn't look like it worked very well. That's fine. Some of it, I guess, may not work well. Um, it's not particularly hard to replace them with, you know, working, working icons, but, uh, I guess keep that in mind. Uh, other than that, so let's see, we have our slow scroll, like we said earlier, our background image is, looks rather fine. Uh, top image, also slow scroll. Okay, that's all fine and dandy. Uh, colors, we have the ones that are shown here, and those are the same, probably. Okay, cool. And and that's basically how you save your work and then bring it over to Takame. Or, not to, yeah, Takame. Um, it's not guaranteed to always be perfect or anything, uh, as, like, you just saw these file icons... I don't believe I loaded a file icon, or I did, but it, it didn't, uh, it didn't get brought over, I guess, or it didn't get loaded for some strange reason. But, uh, anyways, so I guess now we'll do a rundown of basically how to use Kame Editor. Um, it's actually really simple. Um, a lot of the elements that you see here are interactable so you can click drag and things will move accordingly uh it does have sound effects that work um i have no sound effects at the moment so it's you, you don't hear anything but uh you can go to folders you can click open to preview the the folder open the back button uh the close button i believe also plays the close sound effect uh, the arrows also are functional, so you can use that. Uh, you can see what these presses look like, or you can shrink the icon, and you can preview both sizes. You can't move any of these icons, though, so that is a difference. Um, it's not a particularly large difference. It's not important either. Um, and yeah, what else is there? Um, the main thing is, I guess, when you're editing your theme, uh, I, I generally go in this order, so I add in the theme, theme information first, the, I leave the icon for last, but, um, like, the title of it would be something like BNA, uh, brand new animal or something, and then some other long title name if you really want to. Uh, publisher, just usually like just the author or something. Themer. Uh, there are also optional fields. These ones aren't really important for any reason. They're just part of the um, SMDH spec. So you can basically ignore all of these if you don't really care about them. Uh, next we have the audio. Uh, audio there are pins in the Theme Plaza Discord um, that tell you how to convert BGMs. Uh, you need to follow those instructions to a T. Uh, don't skip, don't glance over, because if you do, you will get it wrong, and nobody on there will like you if you get it wrong. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, easy way to do it, um, basically if you have a music file 
which let's get audacity and let's grab ourselves a music file from here okay so here's our audacity uh, as for our music file we'll just take um well i mean, i already have an edited version but Usually you would take like this uh, MP3, edit it down, cut areas that you don't really need, and basically make it short enough so that it fits. So if you see here, mine, I cut it down to about, what is this, 50, 58 seconds, 59, basically a minute from uh, three minutes something. Uh, generally you want to keep within about two 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 point no was it two minutes and 12 seconds at a maximum generally it, it helps it, it keeps it so that your quality is rather decent it doesn't sound bad um longer than that and you're kind of dropping your quality for a longer clip uh but generally uh, all you have to do is you cut it clip it to whatever length and then uh, select the very end here. And then you just see how long that is, which in this case, it is the 59 seconds. You do a little bit of math. Uh, calculate, calculate for, thank you. Okay, cool. We do a little bit of math. We just divide that Let's say 2922920 divided by the number of seconds, which we're just going to round it to 59 seconds. And we get 4,000 something or other. Am I missing a zero? I think I'm missing a zero. I think I'm missing a zero. 2922920. Two nine two two. Wow. Okay. I'm having incredibly awful uh, calculator issues. Uh, fifty nine. Okay, this garbage. My calculator is garbage. Use my regular calculator. Okay, so 2922920 2, divided by 59. We get 49,541, uh, which is already higher than this current project rate is. So we don't want to go up. We only ever want to round down. Uh, so we just leave it. If this were something like 32 hundred or I don't know like fifteen six eight two or something like that then we round down to the nearest thousandth which in this case would be fifteen thousand uh, and that's just to stay within the BGM limit uh, so basically that's that's that part you save and you just uh, what is it export as wave um, you don't really need to change anything. It should be signed 16-bit PCM as WAVE. Uh, Microsoft, I believe, is the only uh, option here. Yes, okay. And you just save it. And uh, the tags here, you can, you can basically ignore these. You don't really have to worry about those. And that's it. That's all you have to do. That's all you have to prepare for your BGM. Um, after you do that, then you just go here and you have a fancy audio converter, which you open your file. Uh, where did we put our file? I don't even remember. Uh, let me just copy it over there, actually. I don't have to find it. Uh, 
paste it right there. Okay, cool. So if we go back here, go here, we have our file, we open that. Um, if you want to have it looping at a later point in time, that's not the very beginning, you can set this to the sample that uh, you want your loop to start at. Um, if you need more information about that, then you can always go to the Theme Plaza Discord. Um, as long as you're not dumb, I can help. <laughs> and uh, yeah, change the format to BCSTM, that's the BGM. If you need BC Waves, there's also BC Wave for sound effects. And you just select a destination. Uh, we have our destination as BGM, BCSTM, that's fine. Uh, and I'll overwrite that. Uh, and then we can tell it to automatically assign to a BGM or not. Um, it doesn't really matter in this case since we already have it, but all you would do is just click convert and then we'll convert it. Uh, if you want to load a file, all you do is you click on the folder icon and then you load, load the bgm.bcstm that you want to use. If you need to know any information about it, this can tell you the sample rate, how many channels, uh, when the loop starts, when the loop ends. Um, all the rest of this st other stuff isn't really too useful for the average user, so there's not really much point to paying attention to any of the other stuff. Um, we also have sound effects, so we have a nice sound effects limit. This limit is uh, accumulative, so the uh, size of the cursor plus the launch plus the folder plus close all the way down. Uh, in total, that has to be under 183 kilobits, kilo, kilobytes, not kilobits. And uh, basically, it's the same. So uh, once you convert your your sound effect, you just open it up again. And it should play here. You can you can test it when you have it loaded over here. Uh, I don't have any sound effects prepared at the moment, but uh, it's it's fairly simple to do. It's it's basically the exact same as the BGM. It's just instead of choosing BGM, you change it to BC Wave. You can actually assign it from here too, so it's kind of convenient in a way. You can have it just automatically assign and convert, and the same step as for where these sound effects occur, um, cursors, I believe it shall, yeah. If you highlight over these little icons, uh, the little information icons, it does tell you. Um, so this one is the sound that plays when you move the cursor. Um, that's like if you move the D-pad over here, you go one, one, one. That's the cursor sound effect. The launch sound effect is when you open up an application. So if we like opened up this turtle game, uh, it would play that sound effect. Uh, for folders, this is what plays when you create a folder. Um, it also plays for when you delete a folder, if I remember correctly. Uh, close, obviously, when you close an application. Frame 0, frame 1, and frame 2 are the sound effects that play when you go through a whole screen. So. Uh, like here we have this screen and if I believe it's by arrows um, once you go past the whole frame it will it will it will play that sound effect so this would be like frame one this would be frame two and then this would be frame three if you go through it very fast it will play through all three of them um, and so generally you want to keep them short and uh, not too annoying to listen to uh, open lid is if you have the 3DS closed for about three or so, probably a little more seconds, and then you open it, it will play the open lid sound effect. Uh, very basic stuff. Um, it's about the same for Usagi. Um, interface is just a little bit different. So once you're done with that, I go with the backgrounds uh, and the icons. So we have a top screen. Uh, this isn't showing all of it. There we go. Here's a little, our little uh, file selector icon. Uh, and the draw type, um, we have none, which is just none. <laughs> Color, which is just a 
straight uh, solid color. So you can set it to just a plain color. Uh, we have color texture, which uh, is not easy to demonstrate uh, because I have nothing, I, ha I don't have any themes that do that. But um, basically, there's it's it's similar to what you see here. You'll see the two masked images um, with one of them going across like this, and then the other one is the one that you see static in the background. Uh, and that's that's these two images that you see here. And then you also have the, the same. Uh, you can choose the color. So that's what color texture is. And then the texture is just a full like a full image. Um, for this, depending on what kind of top screen and bottom screen you plan on using, uh, the size requirement will change. So right now we have a slow scroll, um, but it also applies to a fast scroll. Um, and if you check out the bottom screen, there's also a page bounce, a uh, page scroll and page bounce. All of these will require the size of the image to be one. 1024 by 256 um, and the singles are going to be kind of the static unmoving just one image bottom screen or static unmoving you know one image top screen those ones will be smaller those will be 512 by 256 um, and if you need to know a little bit more information about that I believe if you click on this Ah, here we go. So this green section that you see here is the visible area that you will see on the 3DS screen. Uh, the blackened areas will be parts that will not be visible, um, but they still have to be there as kind of like padding um, to make the image a nice convenient size for the 3DS to use. Uh, so this one is for the single one. This longer one is for... Uh, what I was talking about earlier, the fast scroll, slow scroll, or any of the other ones, uh, page and bounce. And so, uh, same sort of thing applies. The 1008 by 240 is the visible area. The other little remainder down here and over here are the unvisible area or not visible area. Um, if you need templates, actually Comet Editor also has templates. You can click on this button here to get those. <laughs> um, next. Slow scroll is um, basically the speed of the how, how fast the top screen scrolls while you go through the icons. And so slow or fast. Pretty self-explanatory. Page and bounce are a little bit different. Uh, they there's frames that it will um, follow, and uh, unfortunately I don't have a good example. But basically, uh, your image gets split into three sections where you'll have uh, one screen, a middle screen, and then a third screen, and uh, it will alternate between them um, where pages zero there the first one second one and then the third one and then just repeats that and the bounce is going from zero one two one zero and if you need to get like a reminder of that you can always hover over these little uh icon bubbles and they will guide you um folder icons are the folder icons we have the defaults which is this icon, and then the open icon, which is this one. Um, we also have the file icons, and those are also right here. For the file icons, um, the large one applies to generally the larger sized icons here. Um, I think it's around, yeah, here. Around this size is when it uses a small, and it uses a small all the way until you get to the very smallest size. Uh, colors. Um, there's a color palette management sort of tool that is similar to Kame, uh, uh, to Usagi, where you can import, export, 
um, your color palettes, I believe. Um, I don't use it since normally I do all of it in here. Um, but it's pretty simple. Um, you just uh, select or show which um, element you want to edit and uh, click on it, change the color. So if we wanted our cursor icon to be like a, a reddish, pinkish red, well, we'll go with like a pinkish red color. Uh, the oopsie. Uh, we'll have like a darker red here. And we'll have a bright color here. And we'll have just a straight light there. Cool. Um, so that uh, also, if you notice, um, it actually is like live colors. So if you take a look at the colors on the screen, they actually do follow whatever color you are currently selected, which is nice. Um, and if you want to preview it without your changes, you can also do that by clicking on the little eye, uh, the little eye. I believe if you toggle off the eye, it actually will save it where you, where it's default. So if it's toggled off, then it's the default. Um, and when it's toggled on, it's using your custom colors. It's similar to Usagi. Um, it's basically the flags in Usagi. Um, if we go back over to Usagi, actually, uh, over here, if we check out the flags, it's basically these flags. These the the eyeballs are these flags, pretty much. So you see here we have the open close colors enabled, the file textures enabled, and if we go back over to our comment editor. This is the open close buttons, how it's slightly brighter than the other ones. And then uh, I believe the files is the is over here. This one, it would be this one. Um, so that's the cursor uh, 3D folder. Uh, if we preview the 3D folder, there's a cool 3D folder view here, which you can use to kind of see what your 3D folder would look like if you want to apply some colors to that. Um, it's not too hard. So uh, for the rest of them, I'll just kind of assume that you can kind of figure out what they are, what they go to. If you don't know, you can always highlight this and it will tell you kind of a general idea of what they are. Come on. Okay. Uh, so this one is what file frames colors for the frame around the file icons in the bottom screen. Click for more details. Does it actually give you more details? Oh, it does. Look at that. Um, yeah, I'm not going to read it. So basically, if you don't know, <laughs> there's always these icons here. Um, as for these uh, folders and saving, those are for quick loading and saving your color palettes. Um, it's also part of this thing. I don't use that because usually I just do all of my colors at once and then I'm generally done with them. Um, but yeah, you can go through all of the colors. If there are some that are kind of a little bit unknown and you probably won't see that much of a difference, those ones generally have this little question mark um, and it tells you <laughs> that uh, it's not really known what the color is for. And uh, this is actually the same in Usagi. Uh, there's also uh, some fly or some colors that are like we don't know what they are for, but we put them here anyways. Um, aside from that, the rest of the interface is uh, pretty simple. Uh, pause, play for your animations. Uh, this little these four buttons here actually toggle on and off these tabs. So if you don't want to see them or if you don't need them, you can toggle them on and off. Um, we have settings. Probably not the greatest idea to do that. And these are the settings for Kami Editor. 
Um, you can change the language, the console skin, which I have just a generic 3DS, but there's also 2DS, 3DS XL, new 3DS XL, blah, blah, blah. And it just kind of changes the look, but all of the, um, all the rest of the interface is basically the same. So as long as you know where, where what buttons are for what, then it's, it's pretty easy. I generally stick with the 3DS one because it's easy to read everything. Uh, you have autoplay BGM, show folder letter. Um, and all the rest of this is kind of not really too important. Um, feel free to look at it if you want to kind of tailor comment editor a little bit towards more how you like to do stuff. And uh, I believe that is that is most of it, actually. Oh, here's even a, a breakdown of how to kind of use comment editor. Um, the only main thing that is probably the biggest stop stopping point for people using comment editor is how to save and load. Um, and that is this little area right here. Uh, we have a new, so we can create a new theme. We can load a theme source. And this middle button, uh, the home button, basically, is to toggle between uh, loading, saving, and then deploying. And usually for most people, deploying is what you'll deal with. Um, you want to, if you want to load a, a theme that someone has made, uh, it has to be inside the zip file, and then you can load it using this deployed load. And you can also save to a zip file by using the deploy save. The other ones, um, this source new and source load, those ones are for the uh, comma editors sort of work in progress format, I guess, or theme format. It's it's um, basically it's a text file that has the configurations of your theme, um, and so you can load that or create a new one. You can also save that or save it as a whatever else you wanted to call it. Um, we're going to do a quick save so that you, I can actually show you what it looks like. But basically, we'll just call this theme. And if we check our folder, it is this theme RC. So if we take a look at what's inside here, You can see that we have the path for my BGM, uh, the colors that I picked, which uh, we have them right here. Most of the other ones are just kind of blank because I never changed any of them, but like the cursor colors here and um, the frames that I want to use, the information that I have here, along with the paths for the images that we are planning to use. Basically, it's a text file for how to where all the files are and what the colors are for your theme so it's not anything too hard to understand but it's also something that most people uh, don't quite understand the first time they use comment editor um, and that's actually it um, it's been kind of a long video I generally make really long videos. But uh, yeah, that's that's how you use comment editor. Um, it's really simple. I honestly think it's just about the same as using using Usagi. Like there's, it's it's almost one for one. It's just everything is moved everywhere else. Like the flags are still here. The the scroll, the page, the, the bounce, choosing texture or solid color. And the rest of it, uh, choosing the colors here, theme information, you know, they're, they're all basically here. So there's, there's no, you're not losing any features by going between either of them. Um, the only difference is that with Comma Editor, generally you don't have to worry about Oh, did I forget to toggle these flags? Because while you're editing it, they're they're literally right next to the the color that you're editing. So 
And usually, even if you do change the colors on the theme editor, it will actually turn on the flag for you. Um, see, the C Wave Manager is about the same. Um, it has a nice little progress, or not really progress, a limit bar as well. Um, that is actually an idea that I suggested that he take because it's a great idea and it was really useful. Um, but yeah, uh, other than that, it's it's basically the same. You load the same kinds of images and things are just in different places. It's it's not really all that bit. It's not really all that different. Uh, but yeah, so thanks for watching. Um, and have fun making themes. I hope they aren't bad and use comma editor. Have a nice day.